G'day, my name's Simon Byrne. I'm a vMix producer based in Canberra. I run two businesses. Uh, one's called Streamout, which is my streaming business. And I also have a business called Think Project Design, which is my event production management business. I put out a video on my virtual vMix control room a couple of weeks ago, and I was only expecting maybe a 50 or 100 people to, to view it, as I thought the audience would be really quite niche. I didn't think there'd be that much many people interested in it. But um, it's since had more than 10,000 views, so uh, that was quite a surprise. And, and obviously, people are interested in, uh, in, interested in what I do and interested in uh, my vMix setup. And the biggest question I got from people was, how do I get my feeds into my virtual studio? How does the content come to me? And there's two ways. Uh, I do a lot of multi-city events with vMix system to vMix system connections. So in those cases, we have a uh, crew in each city with their own vMix system. And we use a vMix call between the vMix systems. And uh, that way we can get a four megabit stream going both ways um, with pretty low latency and uh, it's, a good, it's a good workable system. The other way I do it is using um, SRT and hardware encoders. And um, that's what I thought I'd uh, show you today. So I've got quite a few of these Killerview Cradle series racks. They're just a 1RU cage frame and I fitted uh, some uh, Killerview cards and I've got some Killerview uh, SDI input cards as well as uh, HDMI input as well as return vision. So you're looking at uh, one of those Cradle series and below there is a Ubiquiti edge router and the edge router's feed the data to the Cradle series racks. And they're quite an elegant solution because they've got redundant power supplies in them and it gives you the ability to easily bring two camera feeds in from remote location, plus say a laptop, maybe PowerPoint or something. And I have a lot of events where that is really quite the uh, perfect solution. So if I just go around the back of the racks, uh, I'll just show you the top one. And all it is is, is uh, I've got SDI in and out, and I've got two channels of those. I've got HDMI in and out. They're just loop throughs. Plus I've got some vision returns. So that's returns coming back from my vMix system in my control room. So I've got an SDI feed and an HDMI feed. And I've also put in some uh, transformer balanced audio return as well. So uh, a, a normal job for me would be to send a multi-view back to the production crew on the local venue. And there might be a return feed for a projector in the room. So uh, I might be pulling in a remote presenter from overseas, I'll pipe it to the venue so that they can display it up on the uh, the house screen for the audience there. And that's why I have uh, two return visions plus the analog audio. And uh, here you can see that's just uh, return multivision coming off my vMix system in my virtual studio. And uh, it's pretty simple. So in terms of internet connectivity. It's just one internet connection in because I've got my own routers doing all of the routing uh, into these racks. But then I've built a couple of uh, peplink systems. And this was version one. This is a peplink system that I built that has two 4G connections plus a 5G connection, plus my own designed redundant power supply. So as you can see, it'll run both off uh, battery and mains. And uh, if you were to lose power mid-show, 
it would just happily uh, default back onto the battery's backup. And that's quite important because when you're running a, a PEPLINK PEPWAVE system, uh, quite a bit of handshaking and, and uh, booting up needs to occur before the system is ready to use. As much as sometimes five to seven minutes. So if you were to lose power to your pet wave system during a show, it would be a minimum 10 minute uh, break before you could get online. Hence I made this uh, battery backup system using um, power tool batteries. Uh, I had a lot of DeWalt power tools anyway, and I needed about 18 volts to make the system work well. So that's uh, why I uh, ended up going with the DeWalt power tools batteries. And when I have uh, two batteries on the system, I can get a solid 10 hours out of, uh, out of uh, the charge on two of the batteries. And then that was version one of my PEP wave system. And that sort of serves really well for simple jobs. Uh, you know, one stream out, one stream in, that sort of thing. Uh, but when I need a bit more horsepower, I've got version two. Um, now this system has three 5G connections, plus another 4G connection, plus the ability to plug in another WAN from a house internet connection, if you can get it. And so that's quite a powerhouse, that system. That system uh, gives me some very reliable bandwidth up and down. And the way it's configured, a lot needs to go wrong before you lose your connection. And so as you can see on this one, this one's got two LAN ports available, plus uh, another WAN port, plus the same battery backup system. Uh, and on this one, I managed to get the power to uh, be a bit more efficient. And this one runs for about 12 hours uh, before uh, the batteries run out. So what I've done at the moment, just for this demonstration, is I've got my return vision coming from my vMix control room. I've just run it back into an input. I've looped it back into the next input. And I've also done the same with my HDMI on this return. And in this case, on this rack, I'm just sending a multi-view back. And, uh, you know, the producers in the venue might find it's useful to uh, have a multi-view coming back to them. So uh, let's go inside. Okay, so now we're uh, looking at my instance of Killer Link Server Free. And this is running on my own EC2 instance at Amazon Web Services server in Sydney. And here you can see all of my encoders. And this is the rack that we were looking at. And this gives me the ability to control everything on those encoders that I need to. And so I just click on the control panel for each device and then I can go into that device and make any changes as I need to. So that means the guys on site don't need to do any changes. I can do them all uh, remotely. And so, I don't know, I've got maybe, I don't know, 18 or so killer view devices, a couple of racks and some un ungrouped gear and a few other people's gear. So this gives me the ability to have real control over my gear whilst it's at a remote site. And it's fantastic. And just as I have control over my encoders and decoders whilst they're on site, I've also got control over all of my PepWave gear. And so PepWave have a service called InControl. And you can subscribe to InControl, and that gives me the ability to remotely access all of my modems. And uh, uh, that's really quite powerful. So if I just go into uh, the BR25G, so that's the uh, dual 5G device plus a, an extra USB connection. You can see that I've got um, uh, two Telstra connections and one Optus connection. Um, and on top of that, I've got a WAN connection, which is also another PEPWAVE uh, um, 
um, modem. So that's my four connections, and they're bonded using Speed Fusion, but not to Pepwave's own Speed Fusion Cloud. I have in fact got my own Speed Fusion server uh, that I've built and installed on Amazon uh, Web Services, once again in Sydney. So I've got an EC2 instance in Sydney running Speed Fusion, and that gives me slightly better latency. But what I have noticed is I get much, much less jitter. And I also have noticed with um, Petwave's own Speed Fusion Cloud, which is their subscription service, that some ports are blocked. And I've noticed I've had problems with some non standard ports using Speed Fusion Cloud. Uh, so that's why I run my own uh, Fusion Hub machine in Sydney. Now, there are an enormous amount of settings within Speed Fusion to uh, set to get this to play nicely. Uh, what I will say is, is, I won't go through all of the settings, but what I will say is you want to set it up for reliability, you don't want to set it up for speed. And when you think about the bandwidths that we use, we're not really asking that much of the system, but what we are interested in is getting as many packets as we possibly can through to the final destination. And now we're back in vMix, and as you can see, uh, I'm outputting this footage here, and it's coming back to me on these three inputs here. I've just put it up in a, a four-way comp here and at the moment you can see a large amount of latency and I've done that deliberately in this case because I'm preparing for a job next week where it's not a two-way job. So all of the content is just coming to me. So that being the case, I've put in three seconds of latency uh, into the system because you might as well have some uh, redundancy and robustness in your system if you're not doing a two-way thing. So that's why I've done that. Uh, but in a normal two-way job, I normally run the system with about a half second delay. So signals coming to me is about 500 milliseconds and my returns back to them, I normally set at 200 milliseconds. So I think that'll about wrap it up. Uh, my name's Simon Byrne. I'm vMix producer in Canberra. I'm a, available for contracting. So if I can assist you on your events, do reach out. Thanks for your time.